Okay, so we left off when we were talking about mixture problems. Um, we didn't get very far in, though, so we'd only talked about one. All right, so I gave you some different steps last time. Do you guys remember? So I told you to draw these little jars. Um, inside the jar, put your percent of the object. Um, underneath the jars, put the amount that you have, and then combine them into an equation. So it says a bottle contains 750 milliliters of fruit punch with a concentration of 50% fr uh, pure fruit juice. Adriana drinks 100 milliliters of the punch and then refills the bottle with an equal amount of the cheaper brand of punch. If the concentration of the juice in the bottle is now reduced to 48%, what is the concentration of the punch that Adriana added? So we're going to draw our bottles. And inside I'm going to have my percentages. So you started out with 50% fruit juice. So this inside is going to be percent fruit juice. You don't have to write this, but kind of for you. Okay. And originally she had 750 milliliters of that. Okay. She's going to drink 100 milliliters of the punch. So I guess now she doesn't have 750 milliliters. How much does she have? 650. And then she refills the bottle with an equal amount of the cheaper brand of punch. So if she's going to refill the bottle, how much is she adding to it? 100, right? Okay. We don't know the concentration of that cheaper brand, but now it says the concentration of the juice in the bottle is now reduced to 48%. Does that make sense? It's like more watery. There's not as much like fruit juice in it. So she's kind of watered it down. And she now has a total of 750 milliliters, right? So these amounts down here should always make an equation. So see how 650 plus 100 equals 750. That should always happen. Like this should add up. Okay. Then it says, what was the concentration of the punch that Adriana added? So that's going to be x. So the way these problems work is if you had 650 milliliters of this fruit punch mixture and 50% of it was actual fruit juice, how many milliliters was actual fruit juice? 325, exactly. Do you guys understand that? You have 650, 50% is actual fruit juice, the rest of it's just kind of watery. Um, so it'd be 325. All right, so that's what we're doing to set up the equation. We're saying we had 0 0.50 times 650. Oops, <laughs> not 620, 650. That's going to be the amount of actual fruit juice we have. Plus 100 times x equals 0.48 times 750. So this equation is telling you the amount of fruit juice. So you have a certain amount of fruit juice plus another amount, and it equals the total amount. All right, so go ahead and multiply out and solve. So you get 325 plus 100x equals uh, 0.48 times 750 is 360. Subtract the 325 over, you get 35. So 100x equals 35. So x equals 0.35. So think about what this means. If it's 0.35, what percent of fruit juice is it? 35%, right? And that's your answer. Okay, all of these work the exact same way. So it always helps when you draw the little buckets or jars. Um, that way you know, okay, percentages go on the inside, numbers go on the outside. All right, so Miss Summit, I should change that to Mrs. Man now, shouldn't I? Has two brine solutions, one containing 5% salt and the other containing 20% salt. Okay, so the percent that we're talking about is salt. So that, that's what's going to go on the inside. Okay. 
So 5%, so 0 0.05, not 0.5, right? 0.5 is 50%. And 20%, 0 0.20. How many milliliters of each should she mix to obtain one liter of 14%? This one's a little tricky because now we're missing two values. Okay, I know in the bottom that my amounts have to add up. So I can let x equal either one. So I'm going to let x equal the percent, or sorry, not the percent, the amount of the 5% salt solution. So I'm going to put x here. Now, I guess it is saying milliliters, so we should kind of be careful. So instead of one, one liter, what, what should I really put? Do you guys know your milliliters to liters? A thousand. A thousand. means one thousand. So I'm going to cross that out and put one thousand. All right, so let's say I have um, 400 for X. So 400 for the 5% then what do I have to have for the 20%? If I had 400 for X, 600. Or six, yeah, 600. They're going to add up to be 1,000, right? So 400 and 600 make 1,000. It's because I have an actual amount of a substance. If I have a certain number of milliliters plus a certain number of milliliters, it's going to equal that 1,000 milliliters, right? So if I have X, then this is going to be 1,000 minus X. You can always kind of check that. See those amounts on the bottom? You have x plus 1,000 minus x. That just equals 1,000. It should work out. OK, now set up our equation. So we have 0.05x plus 0.20 times 1,000 minus x equals 0.14 times 1,000. If you didn't notice, switch it to um, milliliters, it's fine. You just have x and 1 minus x for your amounts. And in the end, you know you have liters, so then you need to convert to milliliters. OK, multiply out. So 0.05x plus 200 minus 0.20x equals 140. If you have 0 0.05 minus 0 0.20, that's negative 0.15x. Subtract the 200 over. So 140 minus 200 is negative 60. So negative 60 divided by negative 0.15. So you get 400. Oh, I just guessed earlier. I didn't know it really was 400. All right, so that's 400 milliliters. Now, when you have a question like this where it asks for each one, though, make sure you don't just circle 400 milliliters and think that you're done. You kind of have to write, you have to say 400 milliliters of the 5%, and then the other one would be 600, so 600 milliliters of the 20%. So you have to write both answers. Okay, is this kind of making sense to understand? Okay, here's a good one. All right, it says the radiator in a car is filled with 60% antifreeze and 40% water. It is recommended to have the concentration of antifreeze in the summer at 50%. If the capacity of the radiator is 3.6 liters, how much antifreeze needs to be drained and replaced with water to reduce the antifreeze concentration? Hmm. So it's at 60%, we want to dilute it to 50%. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw, draw our little buckets. Whenever I have something that says drained, I don't really draw the minus the bucket. You know, you can. But I just kind of think about it. So it's originally 60%. So we're talking about the percent of antifreeze. Okay, 
I'm going to drain some of it out. So I originally started with 3.6 liters, but I'm going to take some out. So it's still at 60%. And I'm going to add in water. So if I have water, what percent antifreeze is it? What do you hope that it is? Zero. You don't want any antifreeze in your water, right? That would be bad. Okay, so it's going to be zero percent. All right. You're going to add a certain amount and you're going to get 3.6 liters back. We want it to be 50 percent then. It says how much antifreeze needs to be drained and replaced, so that's going to be our x. So what goes underneath the 0 0.60 then? We need those amounts to add. Enjoying breakfast without milk. I got here almost on time. What do we put underneath? 3.6 minus x. Right? Do you see how those amounts add? 3.6 minus x plus x ends up being 3.6. Okay, that's how you can kind of check. You could also think of it logically, like if I had one liter of water that I'm adding, that means I had 2.6 for the, for the original. You can think of numbers. All right, now these problems are good. Notice how I had zero for an amount. You could also have one for an amount. So think about when I would need one. So if I'm talking about like pure orange juice or something, I think you have something like that in your homework. If I'm talking about pure orange juice, so I start with like a diluted brand, so a cheap brand of orange juice that has a lot of water in it, and I want to increase the uh, percent orange juice, I could add in what's called pure orange juice. If it's pure orange juice, what percent orange juice would it be? 100%, so you put one. So sometimes you'll have pure something, like I want to add in pure whatever. Um, pure antifreeze, you could have that. That'd be one. The percentage would be one. So you might want to write yourself a little note to remember that. All right, so I have 0 0.60 times 3.6 minus x plus 0x, so that goes away, equals 0 0.50 times 3.6. So I get 2.16 minus 0.60x equals... 1.8. 1.8 minus 2.16 gives me negative 0.36. So I have negative 0.60x equals negative 0.36. This deck, Mom, you got it. So you get x equals 0.6. Okay, so it's 0.6 liters that you're draining out and then replacing. You feel pretty good about the mixture problems? I think you can handle it. They're not too bad. All right, job sharing. So we've done these before, so this should kind of be a review. So it says find the fraction of the job that can be completed by each person in one hour or one minute or whatever time you're talking about. Um, add the fractions for each person and set them equal to the fraction of the job that they can, they can complete all together. So your equation should look like 1 over x plus 1 over y equals 1 over z. Okay, so if uh, Taylor and Melvin were working together, it'd be 1 over the amount of time it takes for Taylor to work plus 1 over the amount of time it takes for Melvin to do the job. And that equals 1 over the amount of time it takes them to work together. Do you guys remember these? Okay. All right, so it says Thomas and Colin share a paper route. It takes Thomas 70 minutes to deliver all the papers, and it takes Colin 80 minutes. So that means in one minute, Thomas gets 1 70th of the job done. If it takes him 70 total minutes, he gets a 70th of the job done in a minute. Colin does 1 80th of the job in a minute. Together, they do, we don't know how long it takes them, so it's going to be 1 over x. So we're letting x equal the time working together. So we get 1 over 70 plus 1 over 80 equals 1 over x. Do you guys remember how we solved these? What do 
would we multiply through by? Yeah, so like the least common denominator. Um, so you can do the least common denominator, or you could just multiply through by each of the denominators, so 70, 80, and x. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to multiply by 70, 80, and x. So remember on the first one, if I have 70 times 80 times x, the 70s are going to cancel. But we don't cross those out. I'm just crossing those out. It's like I'm putting my fingers over them, right? You guys are going to leave those on your paper. Remember, we don't actually cross them out. So when I do that, I have 80 times x. Okay, on the next one, I would cross out the 80s, right? 80 on top, 80 on bottom, they go away. So you're thinking of putting your fingers over those. Don't cross them out. So you'd have 70x and 1, so 70x. And then the last ones, the x's, go away. So you'd have 70 times 80 times 1. So you get that. So you get 80x plus 70x, so you get 150x equals 70 times 80, so 5,600. So x equals 37.3 repeating. So it takes them working together about 37 minutes. You could say 37 and a third if you want. Or 37 minutes and 20 seconds, you could even say that. A third of a minute. <laughs> All right, makes sense? Now you guys try the next one. Well, Melvin, you've been used a couple times now. Okay, Melvin and Jake are painting a house. Working to the, together, they can finish painting two-thirds of the time it takes Melvin alone. Jake takes six hours working alone. How long does it take Melvin to finish painting a house alone? Okay, so go ahead and set it up and see what you get. It's kind of a tricky one. All right, so we're going to let x equal the amount of time amount of time it takes Melvin alone. Melvin alone. So together, it says they take two thirds of the time it takes Melvin alone. And it says Jake takes six hours working alone. So I'm going to have one over six. So that's the amount of time, or the amount of work that Jake can get done in one hour, one sixth of the job, right? So Melvin alone is x. So one over x. So that equals one over together, two thirds x. So what I was saying is I would probably think of this like one divided by two thirds x. If I have two-thirds x, the x is on top with the two, two-thirds x. So that's one times three over two x. So see how that denominator just flips. It becomes three over two x. So you're going to have three over two x and one over six plus one over x. Okay, so you can multiply through by the least common denominator or you can multiply through by all the denominators. I personally would just multiply through by six x. Do you guys see how that would be enough? because then everything would cancel with something. So if I multiply through by 6x on the first one, so 6x times 1 sixth, what do I get? 1x, right? On the next one, I have 6x times 1 over x. The x's would cancel. So you get 6. And the last one, the 6x and the 2x reduce down. So how do 6x and 2x reduce? 3. So 3 times 3 is 9. So you get x plus 6 equals 9, so x equals 3. So it takes 2 thirds. Oh, so Melvin's just way faster than Jake, apparently. <laughs> so it takes 3 hours for her to work alone. So that means she's the super speedy one. Jake takes 6 hours. Um, together, it takes them two-thirds of the time it takes for a loan, so it would take two hours working together. All right, so next one. So John and Eric use hoses to fill up John's swimming pool. Both hoses take 18 hours to fill the pool. John's hose used alone takes 20% less of the time than Eric's hose alone. 
how much time is required to fill the pool by each hose alone. So notice how you said 20% less than Eric's. So we're going to let x equal um, the amount of time for Eric alone. It does take forever to fill swimming pools. Have you guys ever done that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, so if it's going to be 20% less time for John, this is kind of a tricky one. What do I put in front of my x? What number? 20% less. No, not 0.2, not negative, 20% less. So think of 20% off when you go shopping. This is a class that likes shopping, right? 20% off. What does that mean? How much are you actually paying for? 80%. So you're taking, he's doing 80% in that amount of time. So he does 80% of what Eric could do. All right, together, we said it takes 18 hours. Okay, so I have 1 over x plus 1 over 0 0.80x equals 1 over 18. So this would be where I probably wouldn't try to figure out that least common denominator. I'd probably just multiply by 0 0.80, 0, 18, and then just one of the x's. You don't need both x's, right? You're going to see why. Okay, so go through. So on the first one, the x's would cancel. So you have 0 0.80 times 1, 8. So 18 plus. The next one, the 80 and the x cancel. So you're left with 18. And on the last one, the 18 cancels. So you're left with 0 0.80x. So 0 0.8 times 18, 14.4 plus 18 equals 0 0.80x. Or 14.4 plus 18 equals 32.4. And then the last thing, divide by 0 0.8. So you get 40.5. So it says, how much time is required to fill the pool by each hose alone? So 40.5 hours for Eric alone. So if he did it by himself. And then 0.8 times 40.5. So 32.4. So 32.4 hours. Uh, for John alone. So together it took them much less time, right? 18 hours. Is that the last one? Yep.